So we've moved on from there. We we did some other books, but they weren't really stories. One was called Thirteen Habits Explained, and we did that A to Z of Thirteen Habits. Mm. But I was dissatisfied with those kind of stories because I found that the children really, really uh, responded well to a story rather than just a, uh, you know, a, a recipe or an A to Z, mm -hmm. that the story connected them. Yeah. And so what, what I went on is now we did an Aladdin story. We called it Five Walls Travels, The Door to the Temple yeah, I'm still of to Wisdom. Read, I'm still to read that. So hopefully you give me a copy of that. Um, tell us about that. Well, it all started with some research. I did a couple of months of research at Virginia Beach at the Association for Research and Enlightenment. When I was about 13, 14 years old, I read six books about Edgar Casey, mm. and Edgar was the most amazing person that ever lived. Mm. He wanted to be like Jesus, mm. and so by that he wanted to be able to heal people. Mm. And so his way of healing was that he would go into a trance and connect with the Akashic records. Yep. And those records. So that's the universal subconscious mind. Yeah. That is all that is. All the knowledge that yeah. ever was, yeah. is, or is to be is in the Akashic Records. Mm. You're talking about humanity, um, the, the morals, the consciousness of us as human beings. Is that where you're getting it? Because, um, yeah. you know, where we actually connect to each other and to people and we see a need, we go, well, let's fill that need. Uh, if we see a void, we say, well, why is that void there? And we go, what can we do to fill it? Um, you know, and, I, and I've been listening to this um, series on TED Talk where the lady goes, there's two ways to be happy. I've, you know, there's two things that, that people, when they approach problems, they do. They ask why, which makes you unhappy, because you go, why? Why me? Why this? Why that? Why? But if you go, what? Meaning, what can I do? And I think with your book, it's like, what can I do to the children? And that's what I loved about it, because you're like, what can I do to help? And that's where Precisely. I think... Precisely. Yeah. I just noticed um, that people are not very financially literate, and mm. I thought, well, what, what could we do about that? And What do you mean by that? I just mean that common sense is very uncommon. And yet if... In business, you're talking about. If children, how to money. If children understood the common sense of a guy like Warren Buffett or people yeah. like him, mm. a Larry Page, who was the co-founder of Google, yeah. uh, Elon Musk, mm. who... You know, I listen to a lot of his talks. Yeah. So, amazing guy. Yeah. So how do we get the, the habits? Mm. Because Warren Buffett says it's only two things. It's education mm -hmm. and how you manage your habits. And so if you want to, I'll give you a little example of how you can manage your habits better. And um, Napoleon Hill wrote a great book called Think and Grow Rich. Mm. And it's this book that I'm taking uh, all of these habits from. And he explained at the back of this book how he used to have a a nightly mastermind meeting mm. with these heroes of his. Yeah. So I thought, well, inspired by that, how do I apply this concept? Yeah, and that's the thing. It's application. I think a lot of people go, oh, okay, wow, look, a millionaire. And then they go, but how do I know? And, and I'm at the stage of my own life. It's like application. I learn something. How do I apply it to myself? And... And I think a lot of times people get stuck at how. They, don't, they get stuck at how and they forget about what. What can I do to apply it to myself? How do I go, you know, and how do I get around to making sense in my life? Well, if you, if you look very closely at how Steve Jobs mm. took a company that was sort of three months away from bankruptcy, yeah. three to six months away, so when he went back mm. the second time, and became interim CEO, if you understand the thinking of how Steve became the person he, mm. he was, and 
And there's a recent book from 2015 called Becoming Steve Jobs. Yeah. And you'll see the hero worship. And the same yeah. with Warren Buffett, hero worship. Yeah. So Benjamin Franklin talked about 13 virtues. Yes. So if you pick 13 heroes and 13 habits that you want to emulate, mm. I'll just give you the example that Napoleon Hill, sure. and I've applied yeah. it to my own thing. John Wooden, I call on you because I desire to acquire the habit mm -hmm. of integrity. Yeah. Edgar Casey, I desire to develop the habits that lead to the infinite intelligence of the Akashic Records. Yeah. Elon Musk, I desire to acquire the habit of being assiduous and full of energy. What is assiduous? Assidu assiduity is sit on your ass until you do it. That's what Munger says. So yeah. Munger's Warren Buffett's business partner yeah. for more than 50 years. So you, He's a, so you so sit there just, and you think. Is that what you're talking about? Until you're yeah, ready. Yeah, read, think. Yeah. I've been applying that. To be honest, when, when you talked about that, I had been doing a little bit of it, but when you came on here and you started talking about how Warren Buffett would sit there and think and think, I have done that for the, since I've met you, since you were here. I've sat in, on, my, on my couch, on my balcony, for an hour every day with my coffee, with my cell phone to the side, with a book or something, or just sit there and just, like even this morning, just sat there for an hour, I got up at about 9, uh, and just sat there for until 10 o'clock, and just just sat there and thought about what was going to happen. And that cleared my mind for today. Well, yeah. Well, carry on. Mm. Carl Brown. Oh no, Larry Page. I desire to acquire the habits that lead to frugality and the ingenuity required to get things done on a shoestring. So forgetality is that's when you don't have anything in your hands but you still want to get it get it done. Yeah. You know, and you it's amazing. If you have the purpose and the passion, yeah, you will get it done. It's and not this, about the money. I was talking about this the other day with um with um my boss here, uh, Matt Keane. Um, you know, with Beagle and and the company of giants here and we were at in a in a in um at a beers and ideas session last Thursday, I think it was. I'm not sure what day because I get my days mixed up. But we were there, and they were talking about, and I was saying to him, it's like if you have a passion, no matter what happens, no matter what forces are against you, no matter if you have money or not, if you desire this thing, you'll do it, no matter what. This is your passion, and your passion should be the driving force in your life, and and that's like a dream, which is what you talked about, having that dream, and children having a dream. You know, we talked about that last time. When you have a purpose, yep. life is different. Yeah. Carl Brown, I desire to, you to acquire the habit of objective accounting. What does that mean? Well, Charlie Munger really uh, is horrified by where accounting has ended up. The huge fees being made. Mm. Mm. And so accounting is no longer objective. Yeah. So... So it's Carl you. Brown was an engineer, and he decided that he wanted to account in an objective manner. Yeah. And this engineer figured out and wrote a little pamphlet, a little booklet, mm -hmm. on how to do the accounting. He had a big business, yeah. and he wanted it done objectively. What does that mean? So, uh, to be objective is to... To really tell the story, mm. not make believe, not Alice in Wonderland, because just a lot of accounting straight, is Alice in Wonderland yeah, stuff. You're trying to actually just tell the real yeah. story, not not the little things on the side trying the, to add bits to it. It's like oh, it's because of this and because of that. Mm. I see what you mean. Because you you were um, you're a financier, weren't you? So you I, yeah. I did financial advising, mm. and so. Nelson Mandela, I desire to acquire the habit of compassion and yeah. gratitude. I think that's something we've, we're losing slowly as, um, as, as a society because we're so self-centered. Uh, it's about me, 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 me. And we see that so much aggression and crime and violence and 
home life where children are being abused. And it's just about my needs, my needs, fulfill my needs. And so over time, that becomes an outward thing and you see and that becomes a societal thing. Yeah. Steve Jobs, mm. I desire to acquire the habit of standing on the shoulders of giants. What does that mean? It means that even a dwarf mm. can see further standing on the shoulders of giants. And so when you're raised up high, standing yeah. on the shoulders of giants, then of course you can do it. Yeah. Because you can see what really is out important, there. Yeah. what's out there. Yeah. Socrates, I desire to acquire the habits of clear thinking mm. by asking the right questions. Yeah. Andrew Carnegie, I desire to acquire the habit of focus. Who was Andrew Carnegie? In 1901, when he sold his steel business, he mm -hmm. was the steel king. He got $300 million in his own bank pocket. At that time, he was the richest man. Yeah. And according to uh, Malcolm Gladwell, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he's the second most prodigious wealth creator in recent recorded history. So wow. I'm talking the last three, four hundred years. And this is years. Andrew Carnegie. Andrew Carnegie. Carnegie. And he used to say, put all your eggs in one basket and then watch that basket. So this is focus. Yeah, yeah. So Warren Buffett and Bill Gates were asked over dinner one night, well, what was the one thing that got them to where they were today? And they both responded, focus, at yeah. the same moment. Yeah. So Warren Buffett, I desire to acquire the habit of using compounding interest. Hmm. Nikola Tesla. Wait, let's go back to that. Compounding interest. What do you mean by that? So, interest on interest. So, when you um, invest your money hmm. and there is a return, mm -hmm. say your return was 10%, you invested $100, you got 10% return. Mm -hmm. So, now you have $110. So when you invest that hundred and ten dollars and get a ten percent return, you now get eleven dollars. Ah. And then you've got a hundred and twenty one dollars. So you keep investing. So there. you keep investing the com let the compounding the magic. Mm. Einstein was quoted as saying the eighth wonder of the world is the the magic of compounding interest. Mm. Nikola Tesla, I desire to acquire the habit of using inversion. Yeah. So inversion is to begin with the end in mind. Right. So that's, so, my, that's my vision there. This is what I want to do. Hmm. This is what I'm going to aim at. And then from then you're looking backwards. How do I get that? Is yeah. that what you mean? Inversion? I mean that it's mm. precisely because you have to understand that Nikola Tesla was able, as a boy, 8 to 12 years old, mm. to imagine himself going to America, damming the dam mm, mm. at Niagara Falls, and creating power from that water, wow. and transmitting that power. And he already could see that yeah. in his mind's eye, just as a young boy. And he used to travel in his mind and it got clearer, and because he did yeah. it every day, it became clearer and clearer, and then 30 years later, he did it. It's massive focus. So, it is focus, Yeah. and it is beginning with the end in mind, so yeah. it's using yeah. inversion, knowing where you want to end up. Yeah. Go there first, in yeah. your mind's eye. Because that also gives you clarity, because it means like, and, and I was talking a couple of weeks ago, uh, at the expo saying, you, you know, this is your dream. If that's your dream, if you want to be this, you know, sports person, if you want to be that artist, if you want to be that over there, you got to start scribbling over here. You got to start practicing over here. You know, Robert Louis Stevenson. Yeah. I desire to acquire the habit of using my intuition for storytelling. Mm. So what he used to do every night, he'd program himself and say tonight. 
I'm going to have a profitable story come to him. Yeah. And so when he'd wake up in the morning, he'd know the story and he'd write it down. So yeah. his universal subconscious mind yeah. was able to assist him. Well, it's clarity because, I mean, a lot of times you get so stressed out. I mean, I've, I've done it myself. I mean, I've gone to bed thinking, I've got this huge project I've got to write. And, um, and so because I've got this huge project I've got to write, I'm, and next month I'm taking the whole month off from everything else. And so, but what I found was, we were planning all these different things. I just went to bed. The next morning I had the whole story outline done in my head. I woke up, it's like, this is how I'm doing. It was within half an hour. Even though I've been spending two weeks mulling it over, half an hour. And you're right, your brain, and this is what I'm finding myself, and I, a lot of my uh, my stories and for the comic books and films have all come, and short stories have come from going to bed and waking up with a story. Because your brain's always working anyway. You're dreaming and you're thinking, but I think a lot of times, and this is what we'd say to depressed people, right? You gotta go forest bathing. Yeah. That's what the Japanese talk about. Yeah. Forest bathing. So I love one of my favorite what things to do every forest day. Bathing. Okay, I live on a boat at yeah. the Fungaray Marina Basin. Yeah. And once I'm on the shore, it's only about eight minutes to walk up to the start of the track. Yeah. That goes past a waterfall. Yeah. Up a waterfall, past beautiful cowrie trees. Yeah. Right up to the top of Perry Haka. Yeah. And so there you are in a completely untouched mm -hmm. natural environment. And this gentleman, this people have written books about the consciousness within trees. Yeah. Don't think that you're so freaking smart, man. Yeah. Because everything that water yeah. on its own holds consciousness. Mm -hmm. Once you study a Japanese, um, oh, what's his name now? A Japanese scientist researched every source of water in Japan, yeah. and then he wrote a book about it, yeah. images on water, and he photographed the water just before freezing point, and these beautiful, you know, if the water was blessed, yeah, or if the water was polluted. Would be totally different patterns yeah. of consciousness within the water, mm. and once you understand that water holds consciousness, remember that we are 60, 70, 80 percent water. Yes. As a baby being born, yeah. it's even higher. It's like 90 something percent water. I noticed that with gardening, um, I'm growing Maori potatoes, well, indigenous potatoes, peri potatoes, mm. and normal potatoes that they sell in the, in the shops. I woke up one morning, and my, um, I hadn't watered, watered the day before, and so the, so the plants had wilted, fine, and the other had wilted, and I was, and I was going, why is that done? And then you know, then I watered it, it was fine, came back up again, within about an hour, it was back up, and so, and I said, well, why, how come, you know, it's done that? And then somebody told me, the bulbs or the actual uh, potatoes hold water. You know, and you're right. And so you put in, you know, and, I, and I'm learning a lot about humani humans by planting, you know, growing plants. Because if you water the plant, then it nourishes. So you, when you talk about all these information that you're giving to me now and to, to our listeners about all these um, amazing people who've done amazing things, Tesla, Socrates, you know, um, all this information, it's like water to these human, to our lives. because. Well, you know, the universal the subconscious mind mm. it is always there. Yeah. So that consciousness of, of Robert Louis Stevenson is always there. Yeah. It's not residing in the person that lived on earth one day. Yeah. That consciousness is still there. So when you so I sit there and meditate yeah. and say this aloud. Yeah. And get clarity. Is that what we can And do? then as you're meditating mm. Your whole body is nourished by this consciousness of all these people. You've called on all that, that nourishment. Yeah. You've called them to your imaginary board meeting. Yeah. And you've called on them for the purpose of learning particular exactly. habits. Yeah. Now, if you do that every morning and night, you 
your life's going to be different. Yeah, because you're, you're, you're trying to find clarity and you're thinking in a different way than what you've normally been taught to think. Because in, in school, you're like, this is what you do, this is what you do, this is what you do. And so you come out as a, as a, as a square box to go into a square hole. You know the shapes? But they don't teach you too much stuff that's worthwhile. Obviously the alphabet and yeah. the maths is handy and learning how to write. Yeah. A lot of people I know. But um, the real purpose of life, yeah. they, you know, well, how do you get a bunch of social, community-minded people to teach capitalism? Yeah. You know, it's kind of, that's like a snowball. Mm. That's you know, in a very dark place, yeah. four letter words. Yeah. And so a snowball in hell doesn't have much chance. So how are you gonna learn capitalism when we live in a society that is governed by capitalism yeah. in a place run by a bunch of community minded, very well meaning teachers, mm. but they're not um, you know, they don't have the background of Larry Page or mm. Warren Buffett. Mm. Um, these children aren't going to learn it from their parents mm. unless they're very lucky and born into great families. Mm. Well, and but even the then... The other thing, you're stunted by poverty as well, which is one of the major things for us in Northland is that you've got... I mean, I was reading this morning, uh, uh, I think it was um, Principal Paiti uh, um, in, in Bay of Islands College, my college, uh, and... Um, <laughs> up in Kaokoa there, who's saying that it took him four years to find a, uh, to find a maths, head of maths department, four years, and, um, and also uh, months, you know, a year or so, or terms, to find other teachers, and they're still lacking, and this is the same across the board in Northland, that we don't have enough teachers. But so, here's something we really have to teach in schools, mm. and it's called Into the Magic Shop. Yeah. Um, a neurosurgeon's quest to discovery, mm. to discover the mysteries of the brain yeah. and the secrets of the heart. And I really wondered if I shouldn't call my book uh, Fireballs Travels, The Door to the Temple of Wisdom, because mm. it was to teach how to yeah. use your intuition, your sixth sense, yeah. and how, to, you know, and it's really teaching mindfulness and meditation and yeah. this gentleman who came from a very poor home household he uh, James Dotty his father was an alcoholic and used yeah. to disappear for three or five days at the time drinking wow. so he couldn't da hold down a, a job so it meant that they were constantly being evicted from their apartments mm -hmm. Uh, that happened all the time, and his mother was so depressed uh, that she spent most of her time in bed, and yeah. from time to time she'd attempt to commit suicide. Yeah. So he was in a very poor household, mm. and so how does a child like that succeed? Yeah. And this boy became a neurosurgeon, and he just, dumb luck. Yeah. He walked into a magic store one day and the woman said, look, if you want to know, learn some real magic that you can't buy in the store, then come here every day for an hour and a half for the next six weeks yeah. and I'll teach you some real, real magic. Wow. And she told, taught him mindfulness and meditation. Yeah. Now, not only did he become a doctor, mm. he, dumb luck, the girl when he was in his final year of high school, was filling out a form yeah. to go to college. Yeah. And he said, how do you do that? And she said, oh, look, I happen to have a spare form here. Yeah. And she handed him the other form. Mm. And um, so he filled out this form to go to college. He got in, didn't have very, very high grades, mm -hmm. and he got into med school. And the hardest thing of all, that doctors can become as a neurosurgeon. Yeah. And he became a neurosurgeon. But he writes here at the end about the alphabet of the heart. Mm. And it's a little like what I just explained about the 13 
Habits and the 13 Heroes. Yeah. Here it starts, the alphabet of the heart. C is for compassion. Mm -hmm. D is for dignity. E is for ik, ik, no, I can't say this word, <laughs> equanimity. Yep, that's it. F is forgiveness. Yeah. G is for gratitude. Mm. H is for humility. I is for integrity. J is for justice. K is for kindness. L is for love. Now, if you say to yourself every day, I am that, I am compassionate. I love you, Lucas. Mm. Mm. I am compassionate. Yeah. I am that, I am dignity. I am dignified. Yeah. I respect you, Lucas. E is for equanimity. To have an evenness of temperament, even during difficult times. I love you, Lucas. F is for, I am that I am forgiveness. I forgive myself yep. and others for all the dumb things that I've done. Things that others have done to me. Mm. I respect you, Lucas, because I am forgiveness. I am that I am gratitude. I love you, Lucas, and I'm so grateful for this wonderful interview here today with you, Malfunction. H, I am that I am humble. Mm. I am that I am integrity. Yeah. I am that I am justice. Mm. I am that I am kind. Yeah. I have concern for others. It's basically getting your humanity back, isn't it? Because through all the things that we experience in our life, we're losing it little by little by little by little. And so when we when we look at sit back and actually think about what's happening. We're not responsible for other people's actions anymore. We're responsible for our own. And so we're taking responsibility over our own lives. I am that I am love. Yeah. I love you, Lucas. Mm. And so it's very important to be kind to ourselves. Yeah. Because we tend to beat ourselves up. And so we have to start these things by being it to ourselves. Yeah. Because once we are it to ourselves, it's just so much easier to reach out to others and be exactly. for others too. That's what I'm finding. Yeah. Because you've already you so are yourself out. You know, you've and cleansed when, yourself. When I was doing the research for the door to the Temple of Wisdom, mm. I thought, well, I want to have a left brain, a scientific mm. way of being able to explain how intuition works. And I realized that the best model is the the scientific explanation is the quantum hologram. Mm. And I think it was 2015 that an Italian, an English, and an American university, they all came out together yeah. and made this announcement saying that the best explanation they had for how the universe works is the model of the quantum holograph. Yeah. And how about, so, how about we pick that up next time? Because I've got Robert um, Robert Mokaraka here, who's next in, and he's got to get away soon. He's a pretty busy man. So, how about we pick that up next time, and we'll sort out a date and time for you. Because every time I have you here, I learn so much more, and so I'm sure our listeners are going to be learning some more, and our what you know people online watching at the moment. So, thank you guys for watching online. Appreciate it, and um, yeah, hey, Kia ora. <laughs> ah, mihi. And hey, are you able to share that? On I am. Facebook we page? will. And Hannah Mitchell. Um, w there's some people we'll be. I'd be wanting you to connect with sometime soon. So yeah, looking forward um, to it. Looking forward. To it. Our internet on YouTube has crashed on me, so I'm gonna be playing halfway through some other music. Usually, I don't like to do that because I'm not in control of the music that's being played. And, and because I do a kid-friendly show, so I'm not sure what song it is. So please forgive me if something unkid-friendly comes on. But we need a break. Um, Rob's going to be on soon. Um, Rob's doing a play around, yeah, around Northland. I've, I've known, 
I knew Rob way back when we were at Polytech back in, in the mid-90s or early 90s. So I'm looking forward to talking to him again after so many years, almost 20 years, if not more. So yeah, we'll be back after some music. And thank you for listening. This is um, Beagle Radio. I'm Malfunction. Uh, if you've got any questions, you can email it. Um, you know, you can email us at info at beagleradio.co.nz. Uh, you can also listen to us on beagle.radio881. And also you can listen to us, on, that's on Skype, and also beagleradio.co.nz any time around the world. And thank you, Beagle Radio listeners, and thank you, Malfunction. It's been a real pleasure, and may God bless you. Excellent. Thank you so much. I always love having you here. Here we go with some music. <laughs>